It's a big news day for wrestling fans. We're going to be talking about some big AEW and WWE stories in today's video with timestamps in the description down below. I want to kick things off with some news regarding a push for a WWE superstar. We're talking about Veer Mahan. Uh, guys, I actually am not shocked by this news whatsoever. Uh, Boozer Wrestling, BWE, has confirmed on Twitter that wrestling fans shouldn't downplay Veer. And the reason why is because the guy is being tailored for some big future in a few years. Uh, Boozer goes on to praise him and says that he is top quality. And this isn't necessarily shocking. Um, yesterday on WWE Raw, we saw Veer Sangha destroy Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin. Which, the reality is this. WWE doesn't really have too many jobber tag teams. And I really love Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin. I really do. I think they're phenomenal. And it sucks that they had to be the casualty in this booking. But WWE has been working incredibly hard to have Veer and Sangha stand side by side, of course, being accompanied by Jinder Mahal, and position them as a dominant tag team. And if you watched NXT, then you saw that WWE was going to mimic that same type of booking on the main roster. And quite honestly, I think it's actually a good idea. Again, I hate the fact that it's Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander who have to be jobbed out like that just because personally I'm a fan of their work and I think they could be doing some really cool stuff with the Hurt Business. Um, that's a whole different topic. But WWE planning a big future for Veer makes a lot of sense. And, you know, I think WWE is in a situation right now where they have been really good at planning out their future. If you look at their booking, if you look at who's being used, the people getting video packages, WWE is doing a phenomenal job of basically getting people prepared for the future. And I love that. Because for the longest time, it didn't seem like WWE was actually planning things long term. Another person that they have uh, long-term plans for is Damian Priest, and we've talked about this quite a bit. Uh, Damian Priest was given a main event match, a win over 20 minutes uh, on WWE Raw against Seth Rollins for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, which, by the way, just a quick little side note, it is absolutely phenomenal to see a World Championship belt being defended on WWE Raw. It looks like WWE is planning a program between Finn Balor and Seth Rollins. They went face-to-face -to, -face to end the show, potentially going to be happening at Money in the Bank. But what does this all have to do with Damian Priest? And guys, actually, what's really cool here is that WWE has been really subtle with these teases, with these little Easter eggs. But WWE has essentially teased some friction between Damian Priest and the Judgment Day. And it started about a month or so ago. Uh, when Damian Priest and Finn Balor and the Judgment Day had a backstage segment with Paul Heyman, and we saw Damian Priest and Finn Balor kind of tease a little bit of friction there. And then if you fast forward to last night on Raw, Damian Priest opened up Raw and basically told Seth Rollins he didn't need Dom Mysterio, he didn't need Rhea Ripley, and he sure as hell really didn't need Finn Balor. And this garnered a huge reaction from Finn Balor because he kind of looked at him in confusion. And WWE, again, the subtle Easter eggs, they are planting seeds, and throughout time they are letting the tree of great creativity grow. And that is exactly what has happened here. Now, I'm going to throw out a little bit of a fantasy book in here just because I think it's so incredibly awesome, and it kind of goes back to the Paul Heyman segment uh, backstage about a month ago. But I'm very curious because it's very clear after Backlash, WWE has something really, really special with Damian Priest. This guy is working out incredibly well on the main roster. He definitely looks like a major player in the main event scene for WWE, uh, which is fantastic news for WWE. Again, it seems like they're thinking long term. I'm curious if WWE would ever have Damian Priest become a Paul Heyman guy. Not until the Bloodline storyline is over, so I don't think this would happen until maybe WrestleMania 40, but maybe this could be something that's clip-worthy. Maybe Raw after WrestleMania 40, Paul Heyman joins Damian Priest. I think there's some synergies there between the two stables. I think they've kind of planted the seeds long enough. I think the fall of the Judgment Day really doesn't fall at all. I don't think the Judgment Day is going to break up. I think you're going to see J.D. McDonough join 
the Judgment Day. Finn Balor lead the Judgment Day. And Damian Priest breaks away. And I would have no no issue with that. I think it makes a lot of sense. Clearly, WWE has some big plans there, and they keep teasing it. Guys, we have some really bad news for AEW. And I think a lot of people are going to be very shocked to hear this. But for those who don't know, uh, basically, AEW Collision, the debut episode with CM Punk making his return, more than likely going to be doing a main event match against Samoa Joe. That seems to be the plans. Uh, that show is selling really well, right? It's in Chicago. AEW announced CM Punk will be there. Great news. However, it doesn't appear that same success is translating to the other shows of AEW Collision. Because according to Dave Meltzer, with the Collision tapings in Canada, ticket sales have not seen a boost whatsoever since CM Punk's announcement. Uh, In fact, Meltzer says it's bad. AEW has sold less than 2,000 tickets for the collision taping on June 24th in Toronto, the day before Forbidden Door takes place in the same arena. The July 15th tapings of Collision in Calgary is still struggling a little bit to move tickets, but Meltzer believes the show at the Saddle Dome will ultimately be okay. Only 700 tickets have been sold for the Thursday, June 29th collision taping in Hamilton, Ontario. However... Uh, the, Regi- the Regina or Regina, I don't know. Tony Khan says Regina. Uh, Regina, Saskatchewan taping is expected to be very, very rough for AEW. Now, this is very interesting because CM Punk obviously is a big deal, right? We've seen the drama play out. We've seen everything play out. And yet, Tony Khan announces CM Punk coming back. And the only market it seems to positively affect is Chicago. Why is this bad news? Well, I actually, I don't think it has anything to do with CM Punk. In fact, I would say it probably has more to do overall with the quality of AEW, with the idea that AEW is going to introduce a new show. Nobody knows what Collision is going to be like. People are complaining about the time slot. I think a lot of people, when you combine the booking and the show quality and everything like that, when you combine that, and you combine that with the economy, I don't know if people are necessarily looking at spending their Saturday nights or a Thursday night watching a show that they don't necessarily care about. I think AEW, and more specifically the internet, has actually done a lot of harm when it comes to the Elite and CM Punk stuff. I really do believe that. I think a lot of people have automatically turned on CM Punk. I think a lot of people have become CM Punk haters based on this he say, she say level of reporting. And to be honest with you, it reflects in ticket sales. And when you look at WWE right now, their ticket sales are through the roof. WWE continues to do really well. And then if you look at AEW, it really just depends on the market that they go to, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. Obviously, growing pains are going to happen. But the idea that Forbidden Door 2 is nearly sold out, but then the TV show is not sold out or not even selling really that many tickets... There is a lack of interest there, and the way to improve that is by creating continuous storylines that are building on a week-to-week basis that lead up to the payoff, and we're not getting that on Wednesday nights, and the thing is, when you're not getting that on Wednesday nights, you're not necessarily expecting that for Saturday nights, and the reality is this, AEW has some really good things happening right now, and they're going to do some really good things this summer. That's true. There's no doubt about it. But I do think there is significantly less interest in AEW right now than there was in 2021. And I think a lot of that comes down to booking. I think a lot of that comes down to people being more invested in the backstage drama and people being less interested in what's actually happening on TV. We'll see how it pans out, but obviously it is a very tricky situation. And that brings us to our final story. Huge controversy because Vince McMahon was reportedly backstage on WWE Raw. General consensus, if you log into Discord, Twitter, YouTube comments, my audience is telling me they thoroughly enjoyed Raw. And I have no problem agreeing. I thought Raw was very, very good. We got Kevin Owens versus Gunther. Very great stuff. A lot of great small Easter eggs throughout the show. 
some really good matchups, the women's matches, the tag team matches. There was a lot of things where WWE was, again, continuously progressing stories and, and starting new stories and stuff like that. Um, so, of course, everybody panicked once it was revealed that Vince McMahon was backstage. Uh, PW Insider originally let the world know around 6.30 that Vince McMahon was there. Um, and now Fightful Select uh, has reported quite a few things. Uh, but more specifically, excuse me, one of the things that they uh, reported was that Vince McMahon, uh, there, it wasn't chaotic or anything like that, but Vince McMahon basically uh, made sh- changes to the show and he changed a significant part of the show just a couple hours before the show. However, the show was received very well. There is no reports of any backstage chaos uh, there was rumors that more executives were backstage in WWE, so that's probably why there wasn't chaos, right? You don't want to you don't want to look bad in front of everybody. But really, what it comes down to is the controversy really starts with Vince McMahon being backstage again, and and I think what people need to realize is that Vince McMahon has always been involved with WWE since his departure, right? We know this. I think the number one thing that matters is Vince McMahon not getting in people's way. Not making it an environment where people are not comfortable backstage, where people are freaked out and and scrambling for plans and things like that. You know, a a good work environment is one where it's organized. And I thought the show was great last night. No, Vince McMahon is not running creative. He changed the order of certain things or whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, I actually thought the show was really paced well. So if that's all Vince McMahon changed, I don't care. But you don't want him doing what he did the Raw after WrestleMania because that's when it becomes a problem. Nonetheless, I'm going to let you guys decide. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below. I appreciate you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.